Hello everybody, Adam here with the trailer Today we have a 2017 Toyota RAV4 and we're gonna be taking a look at the Thule Pro Ride XT roof mounted bike rack. So this is gonna be for your fat tire bikes. And when we're comparing these to some of the other ones that you have on the site, what really sets this one apart is this little arm. So if you do have fenders on your fat tire bike, this is gonna be one of the only options that you have to be able to lock it down. A lot of them do wheel hooks, but with this, it's actually really cool. Whenever you're like ready to load up, you just press that button and it's ready to go. And then when you wanna tighten it down, you can tighten it down. I really like that. So if you do have some carbon fiber frame bikes, this isn't gonna be the best, but there is a little protector that you can grab, it does not come with it, that will just kind of protect that carbon fiber frame from any damage. But that's really what kind of sets this apart. It's gonna be able to work with fat tires up to five inches in width. As you can see, we got some really big tires. I think these are about 4.8 inches. So it really does fill up the whole entire cradle. And also we're gonna be able to have a max weight capacity of 44 pounds. No bike rack is perfect. I mess with every single one on our site and there's always at least one or two things that kind of give me a little bit of trouble. So let's kind of start there. With the Pro Ride, I really had a decent amount of trouble kind of mounting it down. We do get two different options. We can either do T-slot or wrap around, but these wrap arounds, it just took me a while to kind of get it all set up. And I really think that Thule's idea with their mounting is, hey, you put it up there, you just leave it up there. This isn't a very easy rack to take on and off. So if you don't mind it staying up here, because you use it a lot, I definitely would say this is one that you kind of just want to keep up on your roof. It just gave me a little bit more trouble compared to some of the other ones. If you want one that's kind of fast to take on and off, the Rhinorack Hybrid fat tire bike is a pretty good one. It didn't take me nearly half as much time as what this one did. So just keep that in mind. Just kind of envision what kind of rider you are. If you just want to keep it on your roof, go with the Thule. If not, you can go with the Rhino Rack. One other thing I don't love about this rack is it doesn't come with locks. You got to grab them separately. Just not a fan of that. If you do not want to have to grab anything separately, the Rhino Rack Hybrid bike rack will come with locks. But really the bread and butter of the Pro Ride is the little arm here. I just think that it's just really well done and has nice little rubber pads. So it's really not going to damage your bikes. But also notice we have a big air gap here. So there's a lot of squishing that can happen. Some of them just have rubber pads and it's just one little thing of rubber. This just has two, with this cool little design. So it does give you a lot of cushion. One thing about the arm, I do like it. I like how it works. It's super easy and quick to use, but there are going to be some odd framed bikes that aren't going to really work with it that well or at all. So if you do have one of those weird kind of frame bikes, this is kind of up in the air whether it's going to work or not. This is kind of a standard bike setup and it works pretty flawlessly, honestly. But all in all, if you are just kind of iffy on whether your bike's gonna work because it's a little weird, then I would definitely go with the Rhino Rack as long as you just don't have fenders on your bike. So those are some things I like about the Pro Ride and some things I don't like about the Pro Ride, but now let's kind of continue on with the specs that you see with all the other type of roof mounted bike racks. Starting with the tube diameter, we wanna make sure it's anywhere between 7 eighths of an inch in diameter all the way to three and three sixteenths of a diameter. And the way you kind of see how that works is that's all the way open. And of course this is all the way closed, but you notice how this top one is a little bit on the inside here. So it can even go tighter than that. So really that is a very large amount of different sizes that it works with. Another nice thing about the knob is you don't have to worry about over tightening. So even if I just use all my might, it's going to have a little torque setting. So you're not going to over compress that little arm on your frames, which is nice. Our wheel trays are going to be able to slide and that's going to help us just accommodate for the different wheelbases. It will accept wheelbases up to 47 and a quarter of an inch. 
And as those start to get a little bit bigger, it starts to kind of get iffy, meaning it depends on your frame size. So this is a little bit more than 47 and a quarter, but it fits. So when you get a little bit bigger than that, up to like 51-ish inches in wheelbase, it all just depends on your frame size. It is gonna be able to accommodate for tire widths from 20 inches all the way to 29. So that's kind of pretty much any bike that you may have. All in all, the Pro Ride is pretty awesome. The arm works really, really well and super, super quick and easy. But this, again, is something that you just wanna install and kind of keep on there. It's one of those kind of things where it's a little bit too much of a hassle for me to take it off every single time I'm not using it. But it is made of anodized aluminum. Whatever pieces here aren't made of plastic, it's made of aluminum. So it's not like it's gonna rust away or anything. So again, I think it comes down to what kind of bikes you have. If you have a normal type frame bikes, this is gonna work really great for you. And also if you're one that likes to keep it up on your roof throughout the seasons, this is also gonna be your choice. But for me, I like to put stuff on my roof that I'm using and then when I'm done, I put it up in my garage. So I'll probably go with the Rhino Rack, but that's just me. But this one does have a lot of features that are unique to this and really set it apart from all the others. So right out of the box, we are gonna have to convert this over for it to work with your fat tire bikes. So what comes in the first box is just the whole entire Pro Ride and all of this goodies over here. But then what comes in the fat tire conversion kit is just this. So I guess you can start here. We're just gonna put these little straps, uh, put the sleeve over it for our wheels. That's really all you have to do to prepare these converters. Come on, buddy. There you go. So now we just need to remove the cradles that are on the Pro Ride. So we're going to start with either side. Just go to the end cap. And with these end caps, all you have to do is just press down this little button right here to release it. So kind of use two hands. See that? Slide that out. And we will need that later. And don't throw this away because why do that? Might as well just keep it just in case. We're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. It's literally the same stuff. Same cap, press down, pull it out, slide it out, and kind of notice where the orientation is. So we have the clips on this side, straps on the other. So I think this is how it's going to go. So let's go ahead, take that off. Slide this on and then replace our cap. And then the same exact thing for the other side. Step number two, we're gonna use this little assembly of hardware. So we're gonna take these right here and we have three little knobs. So each one is gonna get one of these and slide that in just like that, just like that and just like this. But notice one is a little different. So if you do have locking cores, which I suggest getting them, you can put those in right now. But we just have these little filler caps that you can plop in there if you want. But highly recommend getting locks because why not? We have them here at E-Trailer. And then the second one is gonna go over here by our knob, right there. So we'll have two different locks. So you just grab a two pack of locking cores. But if you do have Thule locking cores, or Thule roof rack, you can grab some for that as well so they're all kitted together. It is kind of difficult to get these in there, to be honest. There's not a whole lot to grip on, but just line it up and it should just pop in. So we are gonna get two different options when it comes to mounting. If you do want to do a T-slot mount, even if you don't have Thule bars, we have Rhino Rack bars on our roof right now. So let me just show you, these will fit in the T-slot even if you don't have Thule bars, just like that. So that's the option you can do. I'm not going to do that today because we're just gonna do the wraparound, but just know it is gonna work with other branded bars. Just make sure they have T-slots. And these are gonna install on the carrier kind of the same as the wraparound. It's gonna be in the same exact place. So we're gonna do that so if you choose this, just follow the instructions that we're giving you for these and the places we're putting them, and it's gonna be pretty much the same process. 
So we're gonna start with the front with the arm. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece here. Notice the wider part. So this part is gonna end up, up on top. We have these little slots here. So as I drop this in, it's gonna kind of curve around. So we have two different options here. It just depends on your bars. There's gonna be one that goes down a little bit lower, or you can go on the top one, which is a little bit higher up. You can see the two indentions, one here and one here. So we can figure that out when we get up there, but most likely this is gonna be the one we're gonna use since we're using aero bars. And also this is gonna be for your factory bars too. So we're gonna do the same exact thing for the other side right here. Slide that in, slide it down, rotate it. Okay, so then we're gonna take the longer ones. There's two long ones and one short one. Take the long one. And we're gonna go through the bottom and up through this little hole. Hopefully I can get it so you guys can see it. We're gonna go up like this and then we're gonna take our little knob, make sure the opening is down at the bottom. And we're gonna put that right on top there. And then rotate that in clockwise. It's just a little difficult with this arm in the way, but we're gonna get this and secure it down. So we're gonna do that for both sides here. And then on the other side, it's a little bit different. And on the other side right here, what we're gonna do is a little bit different. We're gonna start with this little plastic piece. And there's gonna be one little screw in the kit. And we're gonna tighten that down with this little tool. So what you wanna do, see this long slot? There's a long slot on here. And I have it just like that. And we're actually gonna flip it around so you can see it. And we're gonna take this little screw and it should line up put that in there, take our included tool, and tighten this down. And we can tighten this one down all the way. This is what we're going for. We want this little piece to be perfectly in that slot, and we really don't want to over tighten this just because the threads are just plastic, so we don't want to strip all that out. But now, we can do what we did on the other side. I'll put this through like this. put this through the slot, and then we can thread this on. I have found it so much easier to kind of just line it up like this, and then just twist the threaded portion to get it in there, because it is extremely fine threads. So we want to make sure and get that secured. And again, we don't want to really tighten these down much, just enough to get it threaded on there. Now we have the whole bike rack completely assembled and it's ready to go up on our roof. But this is a great time to measure our crossbar spread. To do that from center of one crossbar to the center of the other, what we're looking for is between 18 and 36 inches and we are good to go. I typically like to have my bike facing forward, but it doesn't really matter with this. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this, it's pretty light. We're gonna put it up on our roof. So really, we could put it up right about here if we really wanted to. So I'm gonna get you that measurement just to see if you do have aftermarket bars we have about eh, from the inside of the tower from the outside to the very farthest point of the bar before the cap it's about four and a half inches and as of right now i think we should be able to get it up on there if we really wanted to so just look for about five inches is what we're gonna need. This is a little too far, just because it goes over the cap. But just know, if you do have a crossbar spread, in, if you do have an overhang about five inches or more, you are gonna be able to put it out there. It'll be a little bit easier to load up, but let's just assume we have factory bars, and I'm gonna do it the hard way, so you guys can see exactly how difficult it is to get a fat tire bike up here. Pull these up. 
slide that forward and that's good there. I'm going to do the same thing for the back, which kind of just lift this up, slide it back a little bit, and then slide it forward. Perfect. So the goal with these brackets is we want them to wrap all the way around. So this one right here on the other end is at the lowest setting, which is only two. And then the one on this side is actually at the highest setting. You can see it's not really gonna work. So that's the goal here. You just wanna get this little piece down there and you might have to kind of loosen it up a little bit for it to fit. And these, these are just your standard elliptical bars or your arrow bars. So you're gonna have to use the lower setting. So this one right here is in that lower little channel, as you can see, right there, I'm wiggling it. And then right behind you is the higher setting I was talking about, and that's not gonna work. So definitely if you have any arrow type bars and not factory bars, you're gonna have to use that lower setting. Now that everything is positioned correctly, we have it as close to the side of the vehicle as possible. We can just take these, and we want it to be nice and tight, but that's probably a little too tight. So we'll kind of loosen it up a little bit, make sure that this thing stays in. Loosen it up. We do want a fair amount of tension. Yeah, you definitely want that little click like that. I'm gonna do the same with the back. And then if you do have locking cores, which you should get them, you can lock that in. And then we just need to prepare for the bike. You can take these straps. There's a little spot right here for them, just so they don't get in the way. Um, and other than that, it should be pretty much good. So now we can just go ahead and grab our bike. So now we're gonna get this up onto the roof. I'm about 5'7", and I'm gonna definitely need a step. We sell this on our website. And we also sell a wheel step, but depending on your vehicle, being back here isn't really gonna help us a whole lot. So it just depends on what vehicle you're putting it on. We wanna grab it as low as we can, and let's see how difficult this is to get up there. Get that in the slot, like that. Rotate it up. Now that that's in place, take our knob. All right, so that should be up. Pretty stable, but we still have some straps to do. Straighten our front. Take our little strap out. Take this around a little bit. I do like how this, you don't have to really pull it down. I have just found that this, let's get that over. This gives you a lot more tension for a lot less effort. Now we can slide this part back, just like that. Kind of rotate this around. And we are done pretty stable up there. Well, now we're gonna take it through our test course to see how it does. It's just gonna be a bunch of bumps and stuff just to kind of mimic what you're gonna see on the road. Let's see how sturdy it is. First, we'll start with the alternating speed bumps. This is gonna be more so like the uneven roads and some of that uneven terrain you might be traveling on. And now with the fold speed bumps, these are gonna be pretty much like normal speed bumps. You get to see the up and down action of the bike rack and see how it holds up. And that'll do it for a look at the Thule Pro Ride XT roof mounted bike rack on our 2017 Toyota RAV4.